in my thoughts and in my dreams They're always in my mind These songs of hobbits, dwarves and men And elves, come close your eyes You can see them too Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Counter Monkey in which um, I have a few games here. The first one I want to show you in this episode is a game that I've never played before. I've only heard about and picked up for this episode. Um, it is the Mattel Electronics Dungeons & Dragons Computer Labyrinth game. And this was made in 1980, the year I was born. So, of course, I've never played it. Um, and this is a very unusual game. I've only taken it out and looked at it once. It is an electronic fantasy adventure for one or two players. And um, it's played with a 9-volt battery. And looking at the... Okay, uh, reading the box, the objective of the game is to find and steal the dragon's treasure... Exciting electronic sounds guide you through the labyrinth, warn you when the dragon wakes. It's a game of strategy and high adventure played on an electronic touch sensitive board. That's this is this is high tech shit for 1980, like an electronic board. Like that's a you don't get that shit today. Like the most advanced stuff you used to play back in the day was like mouse trap, and that shit didn't work. So, and this is Dungeons and Dragons. You wouldn't think you'd get like an electronic game out of D and D. Um, a game for one or two players, though. Um, you wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily think D and D would be a solitaire game, but. Um, Okay, um, like I said, I've only fired this up one time, and I was a little surprised at what I saw. I think you will be, too. Um, it's not quite what you expect, so we'll, uh, I'll show you what it is, and I'll show you what I was expecting. So, this is the game itself, and it looks like a castle, obviously. And the first thing I'll tell you is I don't know how to play. <laughs> so uh, I, I guess that's actually the first good place to start because the 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 experience of, of playing this game for the first time is is a singular experience if you follow me because just the first time firing it up it's it's a real what the fuck moment you know. So just looking at this, you. There's all these pictures on it, you know, um, it may be a little hard to see, but there's like a bird, and there's a sword, and there's this chalice, there's a guy, there's a snake. And they're, all, they're not all different, but they all, they're, they're all very strange. And there's some of these with some of these buttons over here, and you're like, wow, this looks really, really hard. And so the first thing I thought is that I, I thought maybe these buttons would light up, and they don't. Um, <laughs> and the second thing is there's a lot of moving pieces in here, and you're like, that sounds bad. No, there's a drawer here with all the pieces inside, okay? And so these are the instructions, and these are all the pieces. And so there's, there's like four pewter pieces. There's the dragon right there. And there's one of the adventurers right there. This is the treasure. Looks like a little treasure box. And I guess this is the second player, if there is one. Um, honestly, I don't think... The, the second player, I think, just kind of... It's the same thing as the solitaire game. He just kind of starts at a different place. Um, again, you'll see how this game goes in a second. It's very unusual. Um, I keep saying that, but it's no matter what you think it is, it's not what you expect. So, I, I actually wonder if I have it, the battery inside now. I wonder. Yeah, I do. Okay, that's good. Now I wonder if the battery works. Which... Okay. That's always an exciting experience. Okay, first question, how the fuck you turn it on? Okay. Is there a 
recall like there was a Okay, so this is this is how it looks like when it's set up. So play alone or against a rival warrior and the dragon computer. There's two skill levels. So we gotta we gotta try both. Find your way through the labyrinth. Electronic sounds help you locate the labyrinth walls, and the walls shift with each game. And watch out, electronic sounds tell you the dragon is after you. Find and steal the treasure before the dragon gets you, and you win. So it's you run and get the treasure and run away. I, I don't think you kill the dragon, because that's not what you do in Dungeons and Dragons. You don't kill any dragons. That's that's not you don't want to do that. Okay, so I, I don't actually think there's much to this game, even though there's a lot of pages, although I could easily be wrong. Oh, wow. Okay, that's setting up. Oof. I could be wrong here. Wow. Maybe I should have read this ahead of time. <laughs> um, wow. Who knew it would be so involved? I just want to play D&D, &D, you know? I think the real lesson of this game is go get some friends. Oh, on and off switch. Okay. This is where, yeah, when I first found the on and off switch, this is where I was, yeah, there it is. This is where I was first really puzzled by this game, because at first, like, nothing happens. Yeah, that's it. You hear, boo doop and you're like, okay, thanks, you know, um, and, you know, there's, there's no really obvious prompt, so like, you gotta have, <laughs> there's no, like, light that goes like, oh, press, press something here, like, start game, no, it's just, Good job, you turned it on. Okay, so before you play, get familiar with the game board and controls. Oops. There's an AC jack? Well, it didn't come with a fucking plug. I swear to God, it didn't. You get... It, no, it didn't mention that. No, because I got this, no. It must be sold separately. Okay. Um, sound preview keys are used alone to preview the first six game sound effects. What? Sound preview keys. Okay. Uh, are used alone to preview the... They are you. Know the sounds. They are your only clues. The sound preview keys will allow you to get familiar with the game's sound effects before and during gameplay. Press them any time to identify the sound clues you will need to know to play the Dungeons & Dragons game well. When you press a sound preview key with the switch key, press switch first and hold it down while you press the sound preview key. These are the sound clues you will hear when you press these keys alone. Okay, so when you press dragon flying, you hear a series of siren-like rising and falling notes. Okay, so let's let's preview the dragon flying sound. Oh, that sounds like a dragon flying. Okay. Um, let's hear what a wall sounds like. Because, yeah. Okay. A warrior. Uh, oh, that. Not in the same order, but okay. Oh, that's the same. Okay, that's the on sound, but alright. Warrior two. Okay, illegal move. A buzz. Oh, I'm sorry, that was the wrong answer. And dragon attacks. Oh, this. Okay. Whoa, okay. Okay, these are the sound clues you will hear when you press the sound preview and switch keys. Okay, so I have to... I have to hold it down? Oh, yeah, I have to hold it to shit. Okay. Okay, defeat tune. It means I've been, I've been killed. I think, I think this will be fairly obvious. I think that's fairly self-explanatory. That's so sad. Here's a door. 
that's pretty good. That sounds like a door. If it was a beep thing. Okay. Um, a winner is you. Okay, a winner. Sounds kind of like Link opening a chest. Dragon wakes. Hmm, okay. Warrior moves. All right, treasure. Uh, again, that sounds like Link coming in. Okay, so those are the sounds. I, I think I can remember. Kind of, they're kind of logicals for the most part. All right. Okay, so you can play D and D as a simpler beginning level or a more difficult event. Learning in the beginning. Uh, if you do not select a game level, it'll automatically be in a beginner level. All right. So we'll just start. Turn the on-off switch to on. Doi. Okay, select the game level, skip this step. Select your secret room. Press any square on the game board that you want as your secret room. Mark it with one of the secret room markers. Uh, um, um, secret room. Okay, okay. Alright, do this. Uh, it's one of these green things. There's one that there's one for a treasure room, and there's so the one with the big treasure chest is the treasure room, obviously. Okay, so my secret room is where I keep all my comic book. Nobody can go in my secret room. Um, so press any any square. Okay. Uh, what square do I want? I want um, hmm, which picture speaks to me? Um, I want to be the warlock. So I'll pick one with a warlock. Let's see, I'll do I'll do uh, I'll do one with some mobility. So I'll do one with a little more central place. Let's do actually. Mm, let, let's just do this one for simplicity's sake. Uh, I don't know if you can see that too well, but this one has a warlock. Trust me. Okay. Be. You will hear the Warrior 2 tune. Okay. It is now marked. Player 2, whatever. If only one person is playing... Wait. Then press the... <laughs> Jesus. If you fuck up... Like, if you fuck up, this game is just screwed. You know what I mean? Like, if you... If you don't... You need the book open to play this. Like, you, you need the book, like, right here in order to play this fucking game, because, okay, so, okay, so, I, I pressed, I pressed my room, I marked it, and then if there's a player two, you gotta do that for his, and then if only one person is playing, press the square for your secret room, then press the next turn, turn key twice, and I guess that makes sense, because you gotta bypass this, because you're, so you're basically playing both players, but you're just kind of doing a null entry for the, jeez. <sighs> Next turn key twice. Ugh. You can change your secret room anytime before you put press the next turn key. Whatever. Uh, each player should place his warrior figure and marker on his secret room square. Okay. There I am. See? Um and the computer after each player has chosen a secret room, the computer will select a hidden treasure room. This room will be at least three squares or three squares away from any secret room. The computer will then generate a random labyrinth. This labyrinth will be different every time you play the game. Now we'll begin your quest. At the beginning of the game, each player can move his warrior a maximum of eight squares per turn. The warrior goes warrior one goes first starting to move from his secret room. When you move your warrior over a square, you must press down on that square, either with your warrior or your finger, until you hear a beep. You cannot skip over squares, or, you know, you have to press every move in turn. 
You can move your warrior up, down, left, or right, but you can't move diagonally. You can turn corners as often as you like, but you cannot move through walls. When you hit a wall, you will hear the wall sound. You must then back up one square and stop. Your turn is over. <laughs> so, <laughs> you can move as far as you want until you hit a wall in which you literally hit the wall. You smack face first into the wall and knock yourself out, and the turn is over. <laughs> so you're like, boop, 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 boop. so you're you're in this in this game. You're trapped in a dungeon, and it's just pitch black, where you're e likely to be eaten by a Gru, and there's no light source, and so you're just like feeling around and smack. <laughs> Great. Okay, so. Uh, when you hit a wall, mark it with a plastic wall piece. Uh, these are the plastic wall pieces. So you're supposed to put them on the, the segments here. Um, so you don't go that way again. For a more difficult game, play in the advanced level and do not mark the walls. That's it? Okay. You do not have to take all eight possible moves in, on your turn. You can stop any time by pressing next turn. Okay, so hang on. So if what if you hit the if you if you hit the wall, does it automatically end your turn? Uh, your turn is over. Oh, okay, so it does. Okay, after you press the next turn key, use your maximum number of moves or hit a wall. Okay, you will either hear the warrior tune or the dragon flying sound if the dragon is awake. If you're playing alone, you will hear the Warrior 1 tune again. See, even if I'd played this before, I would still have to read this. That's the goofy thing. Like, so, honestly, it didn't matter if I'd read this before, because I'd have to still go through this procedure. I'd have to play this, like, six to seven times before I'd, like, have this committed to memory. Continue moving, taking turns, and... Finding walls, marking walls wherever you find them, try to find and mark as many walls as possible before the dragon wakes up. Both warriors can occupy the same square as long as neither of them has the treasure. When two warriors temporarily land on the same square, the second warrior on the square should wait until the first one loses again. At the beginning of the game, the dragon is asleep in the treasure room, but the dragon sleeps with one eye open. After each player has taken one turn, the dragon checks to see if anyone is approaching too close to the treasure. That's what the dragon looks like. If either player is three squares away or closer in any direction, the dragon wakes completely. You hear the dragon wake sound, which is a low buzzing. As soon as the second player's turn is over, or whatever, the dragon moves one square. You hear the dragon flying sound. When the dragon is awake, it starts to chase the nearest warrior. It always moves one square at a time. If only one person is okay. The dragon can move diagonally and can fly over walls. Son of a bitch. That guy sucks. If the dragon is chasing one warrior and the second warrior happens to move closer, he changes course. If either warrior gets the treasure, he will immediately start after that warrior, even if either warrior, the other warrior is closer. And then, dragon attack. The dragon is invisible. What? No, he's not. He's fucking huge. Look at this son of a bitch. He's... Fuck, how, he's invisible. Fuck him. When you hear it waking, you know that it's only three squares away or closer in some direction. You will not know the dragon's exact location until it attacks you. Use the dragon piece to mark the general vicinity of a dragon. <laughs> three squares in any direction. Yeah, mark the general vicinity. Fuck you. Ugh. When you land on the dragon, or it lands on your warrior, it attacks you and wounds your warrior. You will hear the warrior tune, followed by the dragon attack sound. Either way, you're fucked. Now, either way, your warrior will be returned to your secret room where he can no longer be seen by the dragon. So you just die and respawn. After each, war after each dragon's attack, your warrior's ability will m to move will drop by two moves. Okay, so you can go from eight to six. Okay. Yeah, I get it. Six to four. After the third dragon attack, your warrior is wounded too severely to continue. You're done. Um, okay. Treasure found. 
if okay, if the, 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 if you succeed in avoiding the dragon long enough to find the treasure, land on the treasure room square, you will hear the treasure tune. You will then have to stop, even if you have not used the maximum number of moves. You cannot move again until the other warrior and the dragon have both moved. The treasure is heavy and slows your warrior down to four moves per turn as long as you carry it. Once you locate the treasure room, mark it with the marker. As long as you have the treasure, you keep possession of it. Now that you have the treasure, you have to get to your secret room to win. If you're playing alone, you must avoid the dragon. If you're playing with another person, you must avoid the dragon and keep the other warrior from stealing the treasure because teamwork is not a part of Dungeons and Dragons. It's about, it's about fucking everyone else and getting the treasure. Well, you know, because everyone's playing chaotic evil and looking out for themselves. D&D is a strictly competitive game where everyone stabs each other in the back. It's like Munchkin, basically. Okay. Uh, when you have the treasure, you are vulnerable. The dragon attacks you now. Oh, if the dragon attacks you now, you're dead. You hear the warrior's tune and the defeat tune. It just fucking eats you. It's not playing around. If you land on the treasure room square while the dragon is still there, you are not immediately out of the game. You will, however, be attacked and wounded. Okay. When two people are playing... Okay, uh, warrior strength. So you, if, you, if you land another warrior and you have the treasure, you have to fight. Uh, warrior. We don't care. We don't care. That's warrior versus warrior combat. Uh, doors. Okay, that's advanced, and we'll get back to that. We don't care about doors yet. When any player succeeds in getting the treasure back to a secret room, uh, you win her. Then turn it off, and then turn it on again. You get a new labyrinth, and whatever. A reminder about the labyrinth. It's, uh, labyrinth walls are invisible. This labyrinth sucks. There's never more than 50 walls in a labyrinth. Uh, doors in advanced game only. Secret rooms. You cannot move diagonally. Dragon is asleep. Dragon is invisible. So what the? F There's no point in this piece. It's not. It's just like when you get eaten, you just like boom. It's just. It's just a fuck you marker. You just like ah, you died. Poof. The the when known. Okay, well, I guess you you can know the dragon's position. Okay, so when it eats somebody, you do know where it is. Okay. Okay, you do know at some point when it fucking stomps on you. Okay. It always has at least two open paths. The treasure always has two open paths leading to it. Okay. Well, what kind of stinks is the fact that, well, if there's two players, that everyone knows where it is. So, somehow. Okay. And yet, and yet if the treasure walls are invisible, if the labyrinth walls are invisible, how come you can't see the treasure? Hmm. Aha. Yeah, see. All right. Okay, so I'm already going to fuck this up. I got to have the I got to have the instruction book open. Let's see. How to begin the game. Let's see. I got to have the book open cuz I'll screw it up. If you, if you fucking miss one step here or like if you lose your place, if you forget what you were doing or or whatever, like it, it the game is just hosed. You gotta start over. Luckily, I don't think this game is very long, but if you fuck it up, yeah, you're done. Because you're just gonna have, like, these sound cues. You, you're not gonna know anything. I just really thought this game was gonna light up or something. It looks like it lights up, because you've got, like, these little plastic buttons and things. Oh, well. Okay. So I can move eight moves if I don't hit a fucking wall. So, um... Okay, so I'll move south. Okay. Beep. Go south again. All right. Oh no. Okay, there's a wall there. Um, all right. So I heard the beeping and then doo doo. Okay, so I can keep moving. It's the next turn. So I'll go. Oh, that's a dead end. That's completely shut out. See? That's pointless. Well, he doesn't sit... What? He's got this little... He's got this little nubbin on the bottom. He doesn't... Oh, I guess so. He, you can push down on him. Okay. Okay. That's... 
kind of handy. I'm sorry if my hand is like obscuring the action. I'll go left-handed here. Okay. Uh, was it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? Ooh, I'm on a roll. Oh, it was still eight, basically. Okay, so, well, you can see how enthralling this is. No, it's actually, it, it's like a memory game, I guess. We'll, we'll see how it goes. It's, it's not exactly evocative of the D&D &D experience, but I guess it's got a theme. <laughs> One, two... I haven't woken the dragon yet. You don't want to wake the dragon. Definitely don't want to do that. One, two, three. Don't! Still no dragon. Okay. One. Two. Oh shit! He woke up. I think the, I think he woke up. Uh, hang on. I want to. I want to hear. Uh. Yeah, he woke up. <laughs> okay. Does he? Okay. He automatically wakes up as soon as the fucking. What? Uh. But is my turn not finished or? Because I didn't finish moving. Or did I? See, I'm already fucked now because I don't think I hit a wall. Uh-oh. See, now I'm just, I'm just hosed because I don't know. Well, I guess it'll tell me if I make an illegal move. Well, I guess I'll, like, the general vicinity of the dragon. Right? What the fuck? What? Ah! Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, 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 uh. Oh, so... Dragon fucking jumped me! So I'm back here now. Now he's gonna... Shit! Alright, right, wait, wait, okay, so I think that means... Because he only took, like, one fucking turn to get to me. And now I'm already confused, because now I should have marked the wall. I think... I think there was a wall here. Ah, see, I'm already bad about this. Alright. So I think I'm gonna preemptively mark the treasure room, because it's either... Here, here, I'll give it a shot. I think it's here. We'll try. How am I supposed to get there now? Because he's just gonna keep homing in on me. Or does, maybe he moves back? If it attacks a warrior, it looks, if it attacks a warrior, it looks around to see if there's any more in the labyrinth. If he can't find a second warrior, it starts back to the treasure room until it sees a warrior again. Uh, oh, okay, okay, so once it's awake, it will always, it will always go after any warrior outside his secret room. Okay. Okay. So now I gotta start thinking about this because I can move six and he moves one. Uh, Oh, now this, I guess this is where the, the strategery comes in. Because he can move diagonally and I'm fucked. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay, we'll try this. Um, Uh, 
And then I'll say next turn. What? Oh, that's flying. I hope it's flying. Okay. I thought that was a tax. It sounds like he's fucking, like, shooting fucking blasters at me. It's like, pew, pew, pew. I think he's here. Um, okay. Um. Um. Oh, shit. Oh, I think that was an attack. Um. No, 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 no. Oh, he got me again. I'm so screwed. I fucked that up. Hang on, I gotta mark another wall. Now I'm, I got I got four moves. I don't I don't think I can do this. I should have gone down. I should have gone down here. I got stupid. Um. All right. So if I say next turn, he might. So he, ideally, he would go back to that treasure room. Um, next turn. Hopefully. No, let's try this. Okay, at least I know there's a wall there. Okay. Ugh. Now you sit on your treasure room like a good boy. At least where I think your treasure room is. All right. Sorry if the angle's not very good. Try my best here. Now my hobbled fucking warrior can only move four. Meh. He got his legs chewed off by a dragon. What the fuck? What happened? I gotta get past him and I can only move four. My mobility, my mobility sucks. Um. I think I'm gonna taunt him and shake my ass here. He would ideally go here. If I move here, he might. If I get, if he is, if I go here, and he is where I think he is, he would go here, and I could go one, two. Uh, I don't know. I'll try. Ah. Another weakness. I keep knocking the pieces over. Here we go. Try this. Ooh. I'm alive. Okay. Now the question is... See, I'm here. The question is, did he move here to the nearest square, or did he move directly in front of me? <laughs> and I don't know. Um, if I were to guess, I'm guessing he moved right in front of me. I don't think I did this very smart. Oh well, here we go. And so died. 
And so died Spoony. <laughs> and then he flew. <laughs> so I lose, and then he flew away. So that's that's the beginner level D and D game. I think I think I need some redemption. So <laughs> we'll try that again. Um, that was that was unlucky. Although. You can see you can see the strategy built into this once the dragon wakes up because then you have to start planning your moves around you know where you think he is and which way he's likely to go. Um, so I can see that it's 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 not really that complex. You still have you basically you have kind of, his his behavior is predictable enough. It's well, it's entirely predictable so that. You, you can pretty easily manipulate them. I was just so fucking hobbled on mobility that I didn't really have much of a chance, I don't think, but... Okay, we'll try it again. I gotta turn this off. Off. And then... I think I push my secret square button. Let's see. Um, let's see. I will choose... I'll choose one you can see a little better. I'll choose this one with the rat. And then put that there. Put my hero here. He's very unstable on that current position. And then next turn, twice. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. I'm trying not to fall dead silent here. I'm, I'm trying to think of uh, of interesting things to say about this game. I'm just um, very unusual to see a game like this played s single player. Um, although I would be, I would be interested to play this two player because then once it's hard enough, I would think it's hard enough playing this single player, and then once you get the treasure, and then being completely slowed down by it, having a second player and the dragon vectoring in on you, that would be lame. And the thing is, then the second player has to worry about the dragon fucking eating him once he's attacked you. I mean, Jesus. Ugh. Two... Come on. Three. He woke up. Oh boy. Mm hmm. He's on me. Oh, thank God. <laughs> if I move ahead, he's like right here, I think. Yeah, he's within he's within three squares and he's moved twice. Shit. <laughs> Shit. Oh man. Oh no. Damn it. I think that's the attack sound. Oh. Crap, I knew I should have run away. Damn it. Uh. 
I got greedy. I was after me gold. Don't, don't you give me any shit, you big scaly fucker. Why are you invisible? I don't like you. Mm. What do I do now? I almost, now I almost don't want him to... I could wait in my room here and maybe he'd go away, but then I would lose track of him. But either way, um, I don't know where he'll be. So I know the treasure is like up here, or at least I think so. But he'll still catch me regardless. Um, hmm. One, two, three, four. I think we can play catch me if you can here. Four. Because he'll take the most direct route to me. So if I go here, he'll go here and I'll go one, two, three, four. Ooh. I think I can tease him twice. So let's see if I can sit here and let's see if I can sit here and moon him twice and he'll fly up here and I can do an end run around him. So let's see if yeah that Come and get me. Big scaly fucker. Two, three, four, five. Oh shit, I didn't. Uh, now I knocked over the wall and I don't know where the wall is. I think it's here. Yeah. Okay, so I'm here. I have to move straight ahead, or at least if I move here, he'll move right here. So I have to try straight ahead, then there's probably a wall here. Oh! Oh! Now, did he go? Did he go right behind me, or did he go? You can't see, because the dragon's so fucking big. So he was here, and he had the choice of going here or here, so he probably took the most direct route. And not knowing how the AI works, I'm going to assume he went right behind me. So now you can you can't see but shit, but we'll, we'll try doing this. He's right behind me. Okay, so if I hit a wall, I am hilariously fucked. And unfortunately, the walls are fucking invisible. Why are the walls invisible? I don't like this. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so uh, what? Um. Um. Oh, he was in, uh, the treasure room was within three, but now I can't remember when I woke him up. Uh. Okay, so it was. Two turns ago. Uh, I think I think it would be in this area. We'll try here. Damn it! Okay, he's got to be right behind me. And so we'll try moving straight ahead. Right here. Oh! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! I got it! I got it! And now he's right there. <laughs> and he's super fucking pissed. Actually, I think I'll turn this around. Why didn't I think of that before? <laughs> I got the treasure and he's right there. And he's super fucking pissed. <laughs> And this is the only escape route I have is like right where he is, or at least the only one I know of. So this is the this is where the game gets fucked. Um, so now I just now I basically just gotta pick a direction and go, and I'm not that lucky.
Oh shit. And now I can only move four. <sighs> okay. And I gotta move. I'll go straight ahead. Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! Oh, and he eats my ass too. <laughs> He's so pissed off when you take the treasure, he just fucking eats you. Shit. Just shit, I forgot that. You don't get a second try. <laughs> Fine. This game's fucking hard. This game is guesswork. I'm gonna win this game. I'm gonna win. I want to kill this dragon. How do I fight the dragon? Mm. Mm. All right, let's go in the middle. That's where the sun is. Let's go right there. And then next turn. Okay. I'm right there. Go south. Okay. Let's keep going south. Yeah. You gotta be careful with the wall, because if I fuck it up, then okay, I'll get knocked over. Okay. Oh boy. In the advanced game I was reading there's some kind of doors. There's, yeah, there's there's doors. Okay, let me let me read what the doors do. We're not gonna run into any unless I play advanced, but let's see, what do the doors do? There are magical secret doors as well as walls. The computer decides when and where to close a door and for how long. Doors are tricky because you never know when they will close. You may go through an open door on your way to the treasure room, grab the treasure, go back through, wait, go back through the same corridor on your way home and run smack into a closed door. This can be serious if the dragon is chasing you. No, this is no big deal if the dragon is chasing you. When you encounter a closed door, you will hear the door sound. You must then back up one square and stop. Your turn is over. On your next turn, you can either turn back and go another way, though you may run into another door, <laughs> or you can try to go through the door again. To attempt going through the door again, simply move your warrior forward. If the door remains closed, you will hear the door sound again and you cannot proceed further. This is shit. That's such an asshole move. So the walls just... Not only do you have to deal with fucking walls, but the walls close at random for no reason. And they open up at random for no reason. Fuck. That's bullshit. Oh, man. Ugh. As if I didn't have enough problems dealing with that. Ugh. Uh oh. There he is. And there's the dragon. He's within three. I have a prediction. I think he's here. So let's run right into him. Nope. Well, he still could be, but... I predict he's here. <sighs> oh, I got a bad feeling. 
feeling about this one. Okay. Oh, shit. Okay, he's on the snake spot. I ran right into him. So I guessed relatively... Okay, so he moved twice. Meaning... He's gotta be... He woke up when I went here. And he moved twice. Um... Yeah, he has to be, like, up here. Um, I don't know. <laughs> well, we'll try up here, maybe. Ah! I figure he goes here. He mad. Oh, what? Fuck you. He so wasn't. Motherfucker. Four squares to maneuver around. I think he's. I think right here he's sitting on the treasure space now. <sighs> so how to get around him? Three, four. Ugh. Ugh. If I move here, he'll move here. Um, then I'm fucked anyway. Ugh. Okay, so I'll stop. We'll, I'll try this. Got an idea. I'm gonna run right into him. We'll see. I'm not having a good day. <laughs> I think I, the, dra the dragon just flies. He's like, I have a triumphant fly home. I'm sure. I'm sure all you people at home are like, I could do so much better at this game. And I'm willing to bet that there's like an online version of this game because I bet this game would be really easy to code. Um, well, obviously, it's pretty easy to code, because in 1980, they made an electronic version of this. Which means I'm pretty stupid if I can't outsmart it. Oh, it's late. What do you want from me? Um, I'll try. I'll try the rat again. Because I'm in a ratty mood. I'll try this. Chain two, three, four. Oh, I'm on a roll. Six, shit. Seven. Eight. I just moved nine. I guess it's just letting me roll here. Ten. <laughs> Eleven. 
Oh, shit. I'm sorry. It, I forgot to hit the next turn button, so I was just... I kept selecting my starting room. See? Do you see what happens when you don't... You get you get lazy and you forget that you just fucking the game up. So I was just like, wow, I'm not running into anything. And I'm moving like 15 times. Where's the treasure room? Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on the best roll of my life. <laughs> Three. Yeah. Okay. This reminds me of an old Infocom game. If you don't know what that is, um, before we had graphics, before computer graphics were invented, yes, seriously, when I was but a lad, uh, before we had color, this was back back in the old days when this was before life had color, like the, with movies. You know, when movies were black and white, the, the movies weren't black and white. Life itself had no color. We hadn't invented them yet. Anyway, we had monitors that were monochrome. They only had one color. Anyway, we had these text adventure games, which were literally nothing but text on the screen that would... It was a little like a D&D &D adventure, a little bit. You know, they would, they would kind of describe what was happening in the world, and you would type in commands. And some of them were pretty good. Some of them were pretty bad. Um, and you know, they had parsers that they were called, like, text parsers. And so you would say, like, take bottle and things. So you take the bottle. Um, anyway, so there, there was a game called Sorcerer. There was actually a series, I think, called Sorcerer. They had different names, like all the different series. But there was one where um, you had to... You, there, there was like a, a labyrinth in the sky and you had to cast the fly spell, but your fly spell only lasted like, it only lasted so long. And I think in this case it only lasted as long, the, the, the labyrinth of course had invisible walls. And you basically had to map it yourself and just through like trial and error, figure out the map and I'm like, this was like I. It was a good game, but at the same time, I was like, "How has how is this like in in the world of this game? Like, how are you ever supposed to know? How is the guy supposed to know like how to get past this maze? You just kind of try. So like in the game, if you hit a wall, you like ran. You you literally like flew like a rocket face first into the wall and like smeared down and like you know, and you died. So I, I saw that screen a lot. So, so that's kind of what's happening here. Is you just you smack face first into the wall and die. Finded some good walls here. Good wallage. Get a good floor plan. Oh, there we go. Oh. Right. Be very methodical. This is important. Obviously, there's nothing here because the dragon hasn't woken up for anything. Yeah, this is just a waste of time. Well, maybe not, because if I need some running room, this will be good. Good to know the layout. Two, three. 
Still no dragon. I guess discovering the layout's no bad thing, you know? Huh. And there he is. Oh boy. Oh! You fucker! I thought he was like, mmm! Like, he's within three! I'm like, oh! Like, how is that? Uh, I don't know what the rules are here. Asshole. I, I'm just guessing he's over here now. Uh, just guessing now. You go away. You go away and you die. He's like getting close now. On the plus side, I think I'm luring him away. <sighs> I think I just... <sighs> Uh-oh. Now I think he's right there. Uh-oh. I'm gonna either run right into him or um, not. Damn it! Oh shit, oh shit. Uh, you wouldn't hit a guy with glasses on, would you? Yeah, I'm high. Oh. I'm in a good mood, or I might have, like, really caused a stomach ache. All right! Now I done pissed him off. Um, now, I gotta hope there's just a straight line to Ooh, maybe. Oh! No! No! Oh, no! Oh, no! <laughs> Bullshit. I don't like it. 
Only a nerd would play this game. demon on it. This was back in the old days, the all or nothing days, when you could still have fucking demons on the board. They can't have demons on the board anymore, because fucking religious nuts were like, oh, devil worship and shit like that. Now I ruin for everybody, so you can't have devils, you can't have demons, or Tanari and uh, uh, Beatsu, uh, I call Betazu or whatever. I call them demons and devils, whatever. Oh, Beatazu. That's I remember hearing an audio book. That's what they call them. Like, I always call them uh, Betazu whenever I had to refer to them. I always call them devils. Beatazu. Jesus Christ. What a roundabout way to say that. I fucking hated it. Oh, Tell me I did it right. I didn't. Shit. Thought I hit it twice. Motherfuck. Could have sworn I hit the next turn key. Shut up. Light up, just to kind of at least to light up to keep track of what square you're on. Like I'm, like I'm not that stupid, but like just to, as a convenience. I mean, I, I guess the, like the lights would burn out because this is a really old game. Yeah, but like, yeah. I don't know. Oh, okay. No getting in there. No, like it just seems like like okay, yeah, you're getting a treasure and stuff like that, but it just seems like even even for a D and D game, this doesn't seem like the most logical choice for. It, it seems like you, you've seen a lot of D and D games out there that kind of involve you know miniatures and and you know monster slaying and you know like rolling dice and stuff like that. There's none of it in this game. Like you know, rolling dice is like, iconic to this kind of game, and there's no dice in this game. You know, a random element, choosing a class, choosing a race. This is just kind of a... It's a labyrinth game, you know. So it's, it's fine for what it is, but I'm not really feeling the dungeon part here. Uh-oh. And there he is. See, this is where I always get fucking curb stomped by this asshole. That, see, fucker! Should I just run away? when I hear that, like, is that just the universal sign for get the fuck out? Am I missing that? Uh-oh. I'm finding a alternate route, maybe. Although now I'm finding an alternate route to get my ass munched. If I go any closer, he's gonna chow down on me. Still. Might as well tease him a little bit. Uh, now I can't figure if he moved over here. 
We'll try this way. Actually, eh, fuck you. Oh shit. That's no good. Um. And here's where I get at. right I think I was right here when I got munched uh, so he moved once when I was here okay so when I was uh, fuck where was I where was I yeah when I was here he woke up I think and so he moved once which means he moved Probably from here or here. So I'm gonna guess here. Ah! I'm gonna guess he's here. Yeah! Now nah, he's pissed. And guess what? I got no way out. Gotta hope. <laughs> oh shit. No. Oh no. I'm so hosed. So hosed. No, fucked. That's it. I'm never that lucky. Ah! Damn it! I just want to win. Just once. Damn you! Damn you, Dungeons and Dragons, the Mattel electronic game. I'm not done with you yet, but I'm almost done. The princess. Fucker. Next turn. Next turn. Did it this time. Not a good start. I immediately run headfirst into a wall. Twice. Three times. I'm making a note here. Huge success. Oh. I am Grimlap the Barbarian. Meath Mart. I like to think my character can see the walls. He just thinks he can smash through them. Mm. I, I, the pictures on this thing mean nothing. At all. <laughs> Ugh. That's another thing that throws me. See, these pictures could have meant something, although the game would be infinitely more complicated. They're just like, these are fantasy-ish pictures. Yay! See, how a smart guy would just leave. It's okay.
Okay, so let me mark this. Um, so let's just assume he's somewhere over here. Catch a break. Oh, now he got me again. Inside my secret room. And I got a wall to put down. Uh, go away. You taunt me! I don't know. What do you think, guys? You think I'm ever gonna win? I don't know. Gargoyle. You're lucky this time. <sighs> Inauspicious beginning. Oh, shit! <laughs> he already woke up. <laughs> I swear to God, he's gonna eat me. Oh God, this is it. He got me. I didn't get that far enough away. This will prove to be an exceedingly short adventure. Oh god, now I'm only... If I hit a wall right here... Assume he buggers off here, and then because I wanted to try here, but if I fucked up, I'd hit a wall, and then he'd eat me. Not that that helps me a great deal if he's over there. Damn it! What was I thinking? Uh. 
At least I guessed right in figuring which square he'd go to. And then, actually, now I wonder if he stops moving. Oh. He did not stop moving. Here? What? His treasure room was here. That was as close as... <laughs> no, as close as I was ever get was going to be that one where I was up here. When I ran into that wall. Ugh. That wall hadn't have been there. Gah. Sword and shield. That's what is on that. This is personal. This is personal now. Alright. I gotta try to get at least one win out of here, right? For those of you who actually play D&D, this is good map making pra practice because somebody has to make a map. You know, the art of uh, the art of ma making a map in a dungeon is is kind of a lost art. Nobody does it anymore with dungeon tiles and things like that. Actually, I should do a counter monkey on that. I I use these vinyl mats to to do that. But anyway, I'll do one. It's good. If you don't have those, they're really, really good. As long as you take care of them. Wow, I just kind of wound my way around the board, and I should have memorized that. Actually, there's not a whole lot to that one. There's there's vinyl mats with little squares on them. You draw on a, with a wet erase marker, and there you go. But I think most people know that. Most people use dungeon tiles now, which are good. You have to buy a lot of them, though, and they're kind of expensive. Okay, so he's within three, so that means he's over here. Probably over there. Ooh. Let me guess, he got me. No. That's amazing. Now he got me. Yeah. Still, good to know. See, now you see, you see my bad strategy here is I'm getting greedy. I'm, I'm making, ch I'm taking chances where I really, every time I've taken a chance, I've lost, you know. Like, I'm really hoping there's a, I'm really hoping there's a way out here. It's never paid off. Like, not ever. God damn it. I'm almost certain it's where this bat is. In fact, I'm just gonna put it down there. Hi, invisible dragon. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Let's see. Ow. 
all that was my knee exploding. Mm. Yes, keep moving south. What? What? Fuck you! That's it. I can't make it. He's like right here, unless. Damn it. Ah! I'm giving up on that round. I just know in the comments section people are gonna be like, Spoonie, you fucking idiot, don't you know how to play this? No, I don't know how to play this. It's a very simple, simple mathematical situation. Don't you know anything about science? relatively smooth sailing so far. Till now. It's actually good that you hit the walls. It's, it's really good that you hit the walls. I gotta put my... If you get too far ahead of yourself, you'll get lost. See, if you get impatient, like I have... I'm kind of getting, then you make mistakes. Because you're so eager to win. Oh, and he's back. The man behind the mask. Okay, so I got here and he woke up. I moved here, so that's the dragon. Okay, so I'm guessing he almost had to be like right here. He's here. So then he moved here. And then he is almost definitely there. You dig it? You dig it. Okay. Oh. Shit. Here's where I'm wrong. Nope. And there he is. Ugh. This situation just about sucks. Um, ugh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. Ah. Uh. 
here's where I... It's tricky. Seven. Oh. Oh shit. Now watch. He's gonna be right here. God, this is so far away. Now I, oh, now I can't remember. Uh, please, please be a way out. Uh, now I don't know which way he went. Um, I guess we'll assume the worst. Okay, so since I hit that wall, I have to assume I went that way. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. No! No! Come on, please, 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 please. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> the treasure, the treasure is mine. Fucking, you're gonna, you're gonna watch it. You're gonna see this. You're gonna see my treasure. There we go. Focus, focus on my treasure. There we go. Come on. See how happy I am? Come on, focus. There's all that junk going on on the screen. It's throwing my fucking focus off. Jesus, look at that. Okay. See how happy I am with my treasure? And see how fucking pissed off that dragon is? Oh my god. <laughs> Look at that. I'm all dancing with my giant box of treasure. And the fucking invisible dragon. He's like, motherfucker. You're not safe in there. Fuck you. Fuck you. I got you like I got you like 20 goddamn times. You think you think you're so bad cuz you got away once? Fuck. Just well fuck you. UK. I'm gonna go home. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I think I think with that uh I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna call it a, a success. I'm gonna call it a, a total win for me, a triumph over Dungeons and Dragons, the Mattel Computer Labyrinth game. Final assessment on this one. It's okay. Um, I, I if if I were to from a, from a D and D player's perspective. It's, it really isn't 
indicative of the D&D experience. Like, if I was to play this, I'd be like, it's, it's, it's a maze game, but I'm not saying like, oh, this is, this is the D&D experience. You know, there's, there's really nothing more to it than, there's, there's, there's no, obviously no role playing. There's no, there's no monsters to it. There's no, uh, there's no dice rolling. There's no, there's no monsters to it other than a dragon. So I guess, I guess in the, from, from a strictly like, from a literal point of view, it does in fact deliver a dungeon and a dragon, which I suppose when they're pitching this to the, when they're pitching this to the company, they're like, well, when you make the game, you have to have a dungeon and a dragon, otherwise they're, they're gonna bitch about it. They're like, you know, where's the fucking, where's the fucking dungeon? Where's the, you know, come on, right? You know, but other than that, you know, you've got this, you've got this board, right? And there's there's really nothing to speak of on this board because what do you put on it? You know, you've got these, you've got a bunch of buttons. You know, so like what the buttons themselves are meaningless. They're just buttons you push that make sounds. And so they've got these pictures on the buttons that the pictures do nothing. Um, and the sounds, it, it's it's really good. They have the sounds like test keys for the sounds, right? Um, so you know what the hell is happening. And even though I said this game would be really confusing, that you'd have to play it six or seven times, you do figure it out, because the only thing you really have to memorize is the, at least for single player. Now, when it's two player, this really gets complicated, because, um, you know, memorizing the dragon's behavior with two players is kind of complicated. And also, um, combat between the two players is weird just from what I've read so far. Yeah, because it, it depends on how many squares each warrior has moved, depending, you know, it depends on who wins. The fucking doors is so bullshit. Can you imagine playing this game on the advanced rules? You're one square away from your safe room and you run into a closed door What the fuck? You know, uh, it's so weird. And I, I, you know, 90 day warranty. I think this is past that. Um, and, and, okay, and I think the, the last thing about this game is, okay, you've got this Labyrinth game, and for what it is, you know, the, the, sound, the sound thing, okay, I, I dig that. But from, when you're talking about a dungeon exploration game, this is a situation you would almost never run into in a D and D game. You're like, when would you ever be cast into this dungeon where you are walking straight into walls? You know, you have no light source. There's a dungeon with invisible walls and an invisible dragon chasing you, and and yet you are still so greedy for treasure that you're willing to just run headlong into it, and you know, you try to carry it out. And there's another player who's willing to just shank you for it. Um, so, you know, I don't know. Um, for for and well, I, but the one saving grace for it is is that it's a solitaire game, and it's really rare actually to find uh, a good uh, many solitaire board games. You don't find many of those, and when you do, usually they're not that good. So this one is actually passable as a solitaire game. Uh, unfortunately, this is not that common a game. Uh, is it worth seeking out if you're a collector? Maybe, but I really don't see you dusting this off that often, you know? So, like, if you're a hardcore D&D fan and you're like, well, I have to play this because it's Dungeons & Dragons. No, not really. I don't think, like, it's not like your life as a D&D player would be incomplete without playing this. It's not like you would ever use this in a D&D game, you know? It's not like some rare lost source book that is necessary for the experience, you know? It's it's just kind of a... It's it's a... It's a little beep and... It, you know, it's it's a little Tiger electronic game, you know, that's... That's basically... It's on the same level of technology as that, you know? It's a 1980s gimmick game. There's a few games like that that just kind of beep and bloop and push like that. It's it's actually kind of strangely addictive when you do it, because this game... It, 
you know, this game does make it personal at some point. You know, when you get fucked over, you're one square away and you run into a wall and you get screwed. You want to win, you know. So it is, it is, it does have that addictive quality. That said, the game is just kind of average. You know, it's it's a decent solitaire game. You can see the way this would be kind of good is. Um, it's kind of like a Minesweeper game, you know what I mean? In fact, it might actually be... You could maybe even see, like, playing it on, like, a phone, you know? Something like that, where you just kind of, you know, you're kind of discovering a map. It actually, it does play a lot like Minesweeper, except you're being chased by something. A mine is chasing you at some point. Um... So yeah, uh, maybe that gave you a decent look at the game. Hopefully, hopefully the camera here gave you a decent look, and uh, hopefully I didn't run too long. I probably ran about. <laughs> uh, hopefully, what was going on was clear. So I'll try to edit this so it's a little more coherent. Uh, we'll see. Anyway, um, the game you're seeing here, Dark Tower. Uh, I'll see what I can do. This game is actually really rare. Uh, but unfortunately, it takes a number of players to play it. It's not, obviously, not a solitaire game. And it plays how many people? One to four players? Wow, you can't play, you, you can play this by yourself. Huh. I still would like to maybe get Miles in on this, because I think it is one of those games that's really meant to be played with more. Dark Tower is a really funny game, though. It's it, it, you'll, there's, not, there's really no other game like this. So you're definitely going to see one from me up on this. But yeah, this one is really one of the rarest type of games out there. It's another one of these battery-powered, like, electronic games. It has this... It has a tower. You know, it has a little spinning tower in them. Yeah. And finding one that works. Really uncommon, and that one works. So, until next time, I would play the real thing. I wouldn't necessarily, re necessarily rely on this. But have fun. Make some make some real D and D stories.